Hi, I'm going to make a camping knife with just some basic hand tools. I've made some throwing knives with only blacksmithing and files, but that was too easy. So I want to challenge myself to make a full camping knife, a little bit more complicated of a knife, with still only basic hand tools. So to make this knife, I'm going to use 8670. I absolutely love this steel. This steel is very similar to 5160, a common spring steel, but the main difference is it has a little bit of nickel, which makes it an incredibly tough steel. Okie dokie, this thing is annealed nice and soft, which means that filing it will be a lot easier. And can you tell how excited I am to be filing for hours on end? No, I actually am really excited. I think this knife is gonna come out really cool. And it's actually not that big of a knife, so filing it shouldn't take too long at all. So to finish off the spine of the knife, this edge right here, what I've been doing with the file is holding at a slight angle this way and just pushing back and forth. And this is really good. Um, I have no idea how good it is for the file, but it's really good to get this edge like square this way and just to flatten it off nice and make sure this profile is exactly where I want it. And it does remove a surprising amount of material. Um, that is looking pretty good. So now I can start flattening off these sides. I have no idea how that's gonna go. It might take a minute. <laughs> might take a fat minute. This is what I normally do for hand sanding and I think it'll work well here. Put some tape on one of these sides. I already have some hot glue on this from last time. So I just need to melt it again and shove this on. Okay, this will go away when I do the bevel. So the blade's all good. The handle, I don't think got soft. I was only annealing the blade portion, so that's the part that like really matters. But I think this is still a little hard from forging it. So, I'm gonna anneal that.
peach reading time. So I got this knife a whole lot thinner than I normally would if I was grinding a knife because after hardening this thing, files aren't going to be able to cut it. Uh -huh. The only way I'm going to be able to remove material after hardening this is sandpaper, which you can imagine doesn't remove material very quickly. So I got this super thin, super close to its final shape, but the problem with that is the edge might do some weird things while hardening. It gets very hot and then cools down really quickly. That could make the, the blade itself warp and bend, and that could make the edge kind of uh, like serpentine and like turn into a snake and just like you know and that's like impossible to fix so I kind of just have to hope that doesn't happen because the edge is at it was 23 to 25 thousandths going all the way down which is too thin normally but I'll just have to be careful not to overheat it that would help and I also probably won't preheat the oil I, uh, I want to get full hardness out of it though. I'm just gonna do it normally and we'll see what happens. Okay, so 8670, you're supposed to let it soak for five minutes before heat treating it. So I'm trying to keep it at the right temperature uh, by turning on and off the forge. Um, I don't know how long I can keep this up without overheating it. This is spooky. I don't have a timer, but that song is like four minutes long. So I think it's been five minutes. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. Oh, that looks so good. Guess who done diddly messed up? This thing is hardened and you might notice I didn't drill the holes for the pins for the handle. I don't know why I always forget to just drill the holes beforehand because it's super easy to just drill the holes before hardening it, but I can never remember and it's... <laughs> so I have to wrap the blade in a wet cloth so that doesn't get hot and put it in the vise here and I have to do this on almost every knife that I make because I always forget. I'm just, I'm just really salty about that.
you can kind of feel when um, you get some pieces that are really flat. They uh, like want to stick to each other. You can kind of feel it. They almost feel like magnetic or something. I'm um, just from the like suction, I guess, from them being really flat. God, the tip just ripped off. What? Is it gonna work? Really? It's so disappointing. I got backup. This is some plastic sheet. It's, how thick is it? It is negative 0.4 inches. Now I'll actually zero my calipers. Okay, it's around 40 thou. And I'm gonna layer it with these handle pieces, similar way I did with the competition chopper that I made. So I need to cut some of this out. And uh, how do I wanna do this? Alrighty, the very front of these handle scales are finished and that's all that I need to do for now because the rest of it I can get finished. The rest of it I can get finished after this is already, already glued onto the knife. So that's good for now. We can start looking at the blade again and I'm going to do a stone wash finish on this. And I usually use ferrochloride as the acid, but I want to try this jar of gator piss. It's, it's just the brand that this acid is called. It's made for Damascus. Um, I haven't seen anyone do it with stonewash, but I'm just curious and I wanna try it. This acid might not work with 8670 because 8670 does have a little bit of nickel in it. And this acid is really good at resisting any steels with nickel. So it might just do nothing. I don't think 8670 has enough nickel in it to fully resist but it might do nothing, I have no idea. And I'm curious, so I just wanna try it. Alrighty, I washed it. Now we can see if this is gonna do anything. Is it doing anything? Doing something. I'll leave it for like 20 minutes, see what happens.
that's it. That's all it does. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. All right, so it's out of the gator piss, and I, I just like saying gator piss. Can you blame me? <laughs> I'm a child. So I'm gonna wipe it down with some steel wool. Well, Windex to neutralize the acid and then some steel wool. And the Windex fell over. And this just isn't getting as dark as I want it. Uh, this time isn't bad, actually. This is the third time doing this. Not getting quite dark enough. It's also not that great of a finish. Actually, that's not bad. Yeah, it's getting better with every etch. You know, I only showed doing this for the third time because I didn't think this was going to work. And I didn't want to waste any time. But I think this is actually kind of good. I'm going to do one more etch on this. And then we'll see, because I think that'll be good. I think one more etch, it will be dark enough. And we can go straight to stone wash. That's pretty cool. I am really happy with this. Probably never gonna use it again because I'll just use the belt grinder. I'm glad I made it. It was pretty cool. Kick flip. I'm back. I went on a camping trip for a few days with this knife. That's why I said I'm back. And this steel held up amazingly well. I love 8670. I was doing my best to break this thing and the best I could do was I took a big chunk out of the handle there. I just missed with a mallet and hit the handle. So I super glued it back on and used some charcoal to fill up the gaps. That's why it's black. But that was completely my fault. That shouldn't have happened. But the edge is pretty good. For a few days of sharpening sticks, you know how you do uh, when you're camping. Um, that's pretty good. I'm doing a terrible job. That's pretty good. So for a knife that's not known for its edge retention, that's really good, but it is known for its the, the toughness, but it is known for its toughness and it is unbelievably tough. I, I love it. 8670 is goaded. And that's about it. Now you have a safe drive home. Bye.